Hello mga kamath! Our video natin is about ANOVA for your thesis and when to do it. ANOVA is a mnemonic that comes from the words analysis of variance. There are several types of ANOVA and the first one that we are going to discuss is the one-way ANOVA. So one-way ANOVA is used to determine whether there are any statistically significant differences between the means of three or more independent groups. For example, you could use one-way ANOVA to understand whether exam performance differed based on test anxiety levels among students, dividing students into three independent groups for low, medium, and high-stressed students. Also, it is important to realize that the one-way ANOVA is an omnibus test statistic and cannot tell you which specific groups were statistically significantly different from each other. It only tells you that at least two groups are different, since you may have three or four or five or more groups in your study design, determining which of these two groups or which of these groups differ from each other is important. So you can do this using a post hoc test. The post hoc test computation will be discussed for later when we are, when I release the video about different computations ng statistical tests. Kasi ang ginagawa ko ngayon ng mga videos is I just discuss first yung mga classification ng data at kapag ka na-classify mo na yung data, uh, it would tell you what kind of statistical test is appropriate for that. So hanggang dun lang muna kailangan kasi uh, slowly lang. Otherwise, magkakaroon ng problema. Pag basta-basta mo na lang, compute ka lang ng compute na base dun sa kunyari gusto mo. Pero hindi naman sumunod dun sa mga assumptions ng mga tests. So, mas mabuti malinaw sa inyo na ang bawat uh, statistical test ay mayroong mga assumptions para dun sa mga data. And if your data doesn't satisfy those assumptions, hindi niya pwedeng or hindi mo pwedeng gamitin yung statistical test na yon So, yun yung ina-emphasize ko sa mga videos na nire-release ko. So ngayon, uh, paano ginagamit yung one-way ANOVA? Mas maganda kung ipakita sa inyo kung if I have a table. So here I have a table uh, as is specified yun dun sa last slide yung exam performance based on anxiety levels of students. Mapapansin mo dito sa left side, ito yung independent categorical, okay? Categorical meaning qualitative yung independent niya. So level of stress, tatlong category, low stress, medium stress, at saka high stress students. Okay, tapos, ang kinocompare mo ay yung kanilang is exam score. So, tingnan natin, uh, parang gusto niya malaman, ay kapag ka high stress yung bata, kumusta naman kaya yung uh, score niya? Mataas ba or mababa or whatever? And then, you do a one-way ANOVA to determine kung may kaibahan yung mga scores ng low, medium, at high. Ngayon, uh, as uh, mentioned previously, sa one-way ANOVA, hindi niya sasabihin kung alin dito yung pag natagpuan mo na there is uh, a significant difference between groups hindi niya sasabihin sa iyo kung sino yung ano kung sino halimbawa uh, kung si low versus medium ba medium versus high or low versus high hindi niya agad sasabihin yun and you have to do a uh, post hoc test so, ang ANOVA, ang gagawin lang niya, sasabihin niya, okay, merong ano, significant difference. Hanggang doon lang siya. But you need to do another test to be able to determine alin doon sa mga grupo yung may significant difference. Now, six assumptions on the data need to comply uh, to be able to do a one-way ANOVA. One of these assumptions, pag hindi na comply, no, no go ka. Hindi mo pwedeng gamitin yung ANOVA. Okay, so first assumption, it was already, all of these assumptions anyways have been discussed dun sa other two videos ko. So, bibigyan ko kayo ng link dun sa description nito para hindi ka na mahirapan maghanap. So, ang unang assumption is your dependent variable should be measured on the interval or ratio level. So, just like dito yung scores, okay, so numerical data siya. Yun lang yung sinasabi niya, kailangan continuous. Tapos, your independent variable should consist of three or more categories. Indip uh, independent group siya, ha? So, ibig sabihin, walang member ng low na member din ng medium. So, kailangan uh, mutually exclusive yung mga participants mo dyan. Then, um, dun sa assumption 3, you should have independence of observations. 
uh, yun na nga yun. And there should be no significant outliers. Outliers are yung may value na sobrang ang layo dun sa grupo. You have to remove that and change it with uh, yung iba pang. Kailangan palitan mo siya. Hindi mo siya pwedeng basta alisin lang. You have to replace another data for this. And then your dependent variable, yun nga, yung continuous, should be approximately normally distributed. So, yung mga scores nila, you have to test it using Shapiro-Wilk to check if it is normally distributed. If not, you cannot use ANOVA. Kailangan normal distribution siya. And then there's a uh, need to be a uh, test for homogeneity of variances. Uh, Levin's test to. Levin's test will give you two different values para doon sa ANOVA mo. So, merong homogenous at saka non-homogenous. So, may dalawa siyang reading ng ANOVA. So, it depends kung ano yung homogeneity niya. Uh, isa doon sa dalawang ibibigay niya na value yung kukunin mo na value ng ANOVA. Two-way ANOVA. The two-way ANOVA compares the mean differences between groups that have been split on two independent variables called factors. The primary purpose of a two-way ANOVA is to understand if there is an interaction between the two independent variables on the dependent variable. For example, you can use a two-way ANOVA to understand whether there is an interaction between gender and educational level on test anxiety amongst university students where gender, male and female, and educational level, undergraduate, postgraduate, are your independent variables. And test anxiety is your dependent variable. Alternately, you may want to determine whether there is an interaction between physical activity level and gender on blood cholesterol concentration in children. For physical activity, uh, tatlong category, low, moderate, and high, and gender, male, female, are your independent variables. And the cholesterol concentration is your dependent variable. I am, again, going to illustrate it using the table kasi maraming gumagawa ng mga thesis na ganito, uh, a little bit complicated. Ito yon exam performance based on anxiety level and sex. So, bali, parang gusto niya malaman kung yung may low anxiety level at saka yung female or low anxiety level at male ay may kinalaman dun sa exam scores. The same thing with medium. Medium female, medium male. Titingnan niya yung kaibahan kung magkakaiba. So, anxiety level and sex. Take note, anxiety level is categorical. Sex is categorical. So, dalawang independent variable yung tinitingnan mo kung may relationship doon sa exam score. Ang dependent variable mo ay numerical. As always. So, yan. Ganun pa din. So, titingnan mo kung may kaibahan. Again, the two-way ANOVA would only tell you if there is a significant difference among group, but it will not tell you definitely kung alin dun sa grupo ang may significant difference. You have to do a post-hoc test. Another example na ginagamitan mo ng two-way ANOVA, hindi naman siya dalawa, uh, tatluhan. Dalawa lang. So, a test anxiety level based on educational level and sex. So, titingnan mo kung magkaiba yung babaeng undergrad dun sa test anxiety level. Ito, hindi na to yung low, medium, high. Bibilangin mo talaga. Meron kasing scoring yun eh. So, ilalagay mo yung test anxiety level scores nila. Scores to. So, female undergraduate, female postgraduate. Titingnan mo kung kumusta yung anxiety level nila pag nag -e exam Tapos ganun din yung male, kung may kinalaman yung pagiging male undergraduate niya dun sa kanyang anxiety level at saka yung male postgraduate niya. So, syempre, nag, ano yun, may, para din may kinalaman sa age, no? Kasi pag mas bata ka at saka mas matanda kasi itong mga postgraduate people, eh. So, yun, titingnan mo kung may kinalaman yun. But we're not uh, checking about ages here. Yung educational level, yung undergraduate to yung mga BS. Yung postgraduate, ito yung mga nagmamasters, nagpi-PhD. So, yan, yan yun, tinitingnan natin kung kumusta naman sila kapag ka nag -e exam Kung ninenervyos pa rin ba? Parang ganun. Now, uh, another example ay yung interaction between physical activity. Itong physical activity, yung hindi masyadong, hindi masyadong physical, hindi nag -e exercise malimit. Medium at saka high. At saka kung babae, lalaki. Okay, babae, lalaki. So, if you want, you want to know yung blood cholesterol concentration, if it is affected by being low physical activity and female, low physical activity, male, uh, medium female, medium male, high female, high. 
uh, male. So yon, madaming parang masalimuot na noon. So dalawa ng independent yung nag uh, aapekto doon sa blood cholesterol concentration. So it's the same thing. Um ANOVA would tell you if there is a significant difference in any of the groups. Pero it will not uh, definitely tell you which. You have to do a post-hoc test. Uh, same assumptions. Then, so as uh, previously uh, mentioned, merong six assumptions sa ANOVA. Sa two-way ANOVA, ganun din. It's, it's just basically the same. So, dun sa assumption five, do um, a Shapiro-Wilk test. Assumption six, you do a Levine's test. Okay? And then finally, may three-way ANOVA pa. So, kung, kung two-way ANOVA is not complicated enough, yung, yung thesis ay kailangan ng three-way. Meron ganun din. So, as long as it complies with the six assumptions, you can definitely do a three-way ANOVA. So, ganun lang din yun. So, for now, uh, ito muna yung video natin about ANOVA. Kasi, uh, almost... Um, kumbaga half of the explanations has been done from the previous uh, videos uh, for which I am going to uh, give you later on yung link. So, ayan, ayan, dyan nyo ganagamit yung ANOVA. So, yung, yung mga tables na yon sana yun yung gamitin nyo na guide kung kailan gagamitin yung, kung ganun din yung style ng thesis mo. Okay, and then check so, siyempre, sa colloquium, you will just say you are going to do ANOVA. But uh, later on, when you already have the data and you have tested it for uh, normality, at saka dun sa, sa normality lang naman usually ka uh, malalaman mo kung gagamit ka o hindi eh. So, if it is not normally distributed, you, do, you have to do a non-parametric counterpart of ANOVA. So, that would be discussed later. Kasi i-discuss ko na din sa so susunod yung lahat ng non-parametric counterparts ng t-tests at ANOVA.